Ruby. So uh, just making a quick video here. Hopefully we'll be able to show some stuff that will clarify things for people. Um, but one of the comments I made was that one of the great things about targeting is it's easy to fade the target. And Jazz had questioned that some because I had made the analogy to a light switch. When I flip this light switch, um, I don't actually care about flipping this switch. There's no reason I actually want to or like doing that, other than I'm trying to make this light come on or go off. And as a human, I learned that this thing here affects that. Um, this is what we can do for dogs with targeting. Uh, targeting is a form of luring, um, but it's much, much more flexible than luring and um, can be a much, much better way to train behaviors. One of the reasons being that, for the most part, the only two things you can really lure on a dog are its mouth and its paws. I'm not saying somebody can't get creative enough to find a way to do something else, but mostly that's what you can do. With the target, you can actually teach the dog to target uh, using different body parts. So I could teach the dog that if I put the target here and I name their shoulder, they have to move the shoulder to the target. That would be the equivalent of teaching me to flip this switch in the sense that what the dog wants is not actually to touch this target. It wants me to say yes or click or whatever I do that indicates it's going to get food or the ball or whatever else it might be. So, if I have a dog that really loves a ball, and I teach the dog if I ask for shoulder, and I have this target stick here, if it touches that with its shoulder, I would say yes, and throw the ball. So, the dog now realizes that touching this ball um, on top of the target stick is, for them, very much like touching this light switch is for me. I don't really care about the light switch. If the lights would come on just for me pointing at this, I'd be perfectly happy with never actually having to touch it. If I could point at it from across the room and it would come on, I'd be thrilled. I wouldn't feel, gee, I didn't get to get up and walk across the room to do it. What I wanted was the light to come on. Likewise for the dog, what the dog wants is the ball, the food, or whatever else. But we can teach them that interacting with the target in some way, whatever way we want, is the key to getting that thing. So. If I go to touch this light switch, I will actually touch it because that's the only way this type of light switch is going to make the lights go on or off. And sorry if that's a terrible effect on video. But the important thing to understand here is, is that um, in targeting we can basically want to do one of two things. One is, I might actually want to teach the dog to touch the switch. Let's say I had a service dog and what I really wanted was for him to turn the light on or off. Well, then I would actually want, in targeting, to teach him that this is a target and that he wants to touch it. But, as you'll see in a moment, I'm going to do a demonstration with Stephanie. A lot of times, all we want is a particular action from the dog. Uh, we may want it to sit in a certain way, stand in a certain way, move in a particular way. And the target gives us a lot more flexibility for describing that motion or that action than luring often does. So with Stephanie, I'm going to teach her that I want her to raise her hand up to shoulder height. I'm going to use the target to do that, but in this case my goal is not actually to teach her to do the target, to touch the target. I'm using the act of touching the target to describe for Stephanie the motion that I want. And because I'm going to reward her for the motion, she won't care at all when I take the target away, if I do it early enough in the process. Um, what she really wants, in this case, is a piece of dog food. I don't know why Stephanie would want a piece of dog food, but she will. So, if what we actually want is for the dog to touch a particular thing, that's our end goal, that's one way of using targeting. So if I actually wanted the dog to turn the lights on and off, then I would want them to touch this. But, if I want the dog, uh, in this discussion, what came up was the Great Dane moves backwards when it sits, and that's very difficult in the middle position and pushes the owner around. If instead we wanted to teach that Dane to sit without moving backwards, there's a number of different ways we could use a target where the animal would learn either that it has to bring its knees or its belly uh, forward as it sits or that it has to maintain contact with a chest target. 
So if it sits in a way that moves back, it would break contact with the target. Sitting wouldn't produce a terminal bridge and a reward. If it sat, let's say, by bringing its knee forward to touch the target, then that would produce a terminal bridge and a reward. And through that, we could teach the dog a different way of sitting, which now it could do in the middle position, and it wouldn't knock the handler around. So just one of a million examples of what you might do with that. <coughs> okay, so we're just going to give a really simple example of fading a target here. Um, to explain why it's very easy for the animal to do. Um, so in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to present this ball as a target, and let's presume that I've already taught my lovely assistant Stephanie uh, to use the back of her hand to touch it. Um, you can teach the dog anything you want with the target uh, as far as what you want to touch, but in this case, because it would be helpful to what we're going to demonstrate here, we're going to presume that if I use the word touch, and I present this, that she's already been taught to use the back, yes, that she's got a little dog touching it here out of the picture, that she's already been taught to touch it like that. So we're going to do a couple that would look like the beginning phase of this once we have the actual touching in place. And in this case, what we're going to assume is what I'm really trying to teach Stephanie is not to touch the target, but to raise her hand even with her shoulder and to do it with her palm down. So that's really what I'm trying to teach her, but I'm going to use the target to teach that. Ready? Touch. Yes. All right, let's do it again. Touch. Yes. So in this case, she's reaching her hand up to touch the target. That's what she's already been taught will produce the terminal bridge, or for those of you that like to talk about marking, produce the marker. Uh, or if I talk about clicker training, click. Um, if I do this a hundred times, and then I try to remove the lure, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, target, that might be difficult and confusing for her. But what she really cares about here is getting the food, not actually touching the target. She's just learned that touching the target is a way to trigger the terminal bridge so that she'll get the food. So watch what I'm going to do next. Touch? Yes. So in that trial, I removed the target before her hand got to it, but because I had already repeated that step a couple of times, she didn't try to chase after the target. She just moved her hand to where she's gotten a terminal bridge the last couple of times. And because she doesn't really care about touching the target, she really cares about getting the food, when I removed the target as she was making the action and terminally bridged when she hit the same physical space that she'd been at before, she was perfectly happy to just stop there and get a terminal bridge. So let's try that one more time and see what it looks like. Uh, touch? Yes. So I just moved the target away just before her hand got there, so she didn't touch it, but I said yes at the same point where her hand would have been in the beginning when she was touching the target. So now what happens is, she actually understands that I'm asking for this motion, not really concerned about her touching the target. So let's see if we can try something else. And by the way, this might or might not work. I haven't actually told Stephanie what to do, so I am treating her the same as if I was training her. So let's try that again. Uh, touch? Yes. Now, again, what was important in that was that I still had to remove the target. If I left the target here, watch what will probably happen. Touch? Yes. So if I leave it there, and I don't terminally bridge when she got to that same point that she originally was getting rewarded for, then she goes to try and find the target. But that's secondary. That's only when she doesn't get rewarded for what she already had, and the target stays there. By quickly removing the target as her hand gets to the point I wanted it to be, and terminally bridging when she gets there, she doesn't care at all that she didn't actually get to touch the target. And so now what I could do is I could start naming this motion differently from touch because I might want to teach her, who knows, 20 different things with the target. So at some point, each of those things that I teach her, I'm going to have to create a new label for. Otherwise, if there's no target there and I say touch, it's going to be kind of confusing. So uh, in this case, let's call this raise. So all I'm going to do is say the new word 
before the old word. So the new word predicts the old word. Raise, touch, yes. <coughs> there we go, put it back down. Raise, yes. There we go, I almost messed up a little bit. So you could conceivably do it that quickly with a dog. In fact, in my experience, it's very common you can. Totally depends on the dog. I mean, if you think of your typical uh, Border Collie, Malinois, maybe brighter than average pit bull, um, Jack Russell, you know, a dog that's got a lot of motivation to act and to move, they don't care that much about your words anyway. So as you make that change, if everything else looks just the same, they're like, sure, I'll do that thing. Then we'll have to repeat using the word and changing up the circumstances a little bit to make sure we get the same thing. So, what did I call that move? Reach. Raise. Raise, 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 I call it. Sorry. It's very good to remember your, your words. Yeah. Um, so, now what I could do is just move myself a little bit. That's a slight change in the visual presentation. Uh, raise. Yes. Whoops. The mouse over here. So, we just change up the circumstances, little tiny bits at a time, while continuing to use the term raise. If raise becomes the predictor of the opportunity to earn the reward, through this behavior, the dog really quickly will say, okay, that's the name for that new thing. So not worry about getting too far into that, um, but what you could see there is that if early in the process I remove the target, the dog doesn't care about getting the target as long as the terminal bridge comes in response at the same point in behavior. And what happens then really quickly is my little Steffi Google here has learned that what I'm really trying to communicate to her about is lifting the hand to shoulder height not about the target. So the target was just a temporary means of communication. Hopefully that'll help us out. All right, we're gonna start training with our little dog, Ruby. Um, the reason I'm using her for this little demonstration for this particular video is not because she does anything great. She doesn't actually do much great. She's a 14-year-old dog who uh, oh, has kind of mediocre um, motivations for training sometimes <clears throat> better sometimes less um, but she happens to be just in the middle of uh, being prepared to fade a target um, we're doing it a little bit with a spin so uh, I might be able to show you what the fading step looks like um, otherwise it's hard to show with a finished dog because it's just all done you can't really see Point there, and of course we have a wonderful cat that might help us out. Let's see. So let's just see if we can get some uh, targeting response from her first. Ruby, touch. X six 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 six. Yes. So very important. I move the target out of the space when I'm not asking for the behavior. Oh, she's already done it. Ruby, touch. X six 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 six. Yes. Good girl. All right. So what I'm going to do in this case, because I'm really trying to teach her um, about the target and the fading, I'm actually going to have food in my hand that she knows is in my hand while I'm asking for the behavior. Um, a lot of times that would be a bit of a taboo in training. We would want to keep the food away until we say um, our terminal bridge, whatever that might be. Let's see. Ruby, touch. X666, yes. Good girl. All right, let's see if we can do this. Ready? Spin, spin, x x x x x x x x x x x yes. Good. So that's the fading step. So initially what I had done is uh, I would move this just a little bit. Spin, x x x x x x x yes. And actually let her touch it. And then just kind of move the point around the circle at which I'd let her catch up with it and touch it. Um, but now I'm teaching her that the target is basically a visual target. It's just a guide. We spin, so she knows the food is here. X six 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 six. X six 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 six. Yes. Good girl. So what you can see at this stage is she's not at all bothered by the fact that she doesn't actually get to touch the target. She doesn't really care about that. She cares about what's the behavior that's going to get her the reward. And just for the heck of it, we'll see if we could do what would be a next step. Ruby, spin. X six six six. Spin. Good. Spin. X six 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 six. Yes. So there you can see the target is way away. 
You can see the confusion created by the food being in my hand, but it's a confusion I actually want and I'm trying to work through at this point. In other words, I wanted to understand very clearly that the food could be right there in front of you, but the way to get it is to do this behavior. So anyway, just a little bit of uh, fading there.